Hello, this is the first of a series of videos which is going to explain how a computer works. I'm going to start off by explaining how a register works. Now, a register is the uh, sort of memory that's actually inside the CPU. It's not part of RAM, uh, it's part of the CPU, and it's the sort of memory that the, the processor can act, access fastest. Okay? It's, a very, it's very important in terms of you know, how, how a computer works. Right, uh, so this is how we're going to understand that we're going to, I'm not going to explain how a transistor works, but I am going to explain how it functions, I'm going to explain how a NAND gate works, I'm going to explain how a bit works, explain how you go from a bit to a byte, uh, and how the byte and the enabler together, with this workflow here, give us the, the register. Okay, so that's how it's going to, this presentation is going to flow. So the first thing we're going to look at is the transistor. Now, as I said before, I'm not going to explain exactly how a transistor works, I'm just going to explain how it functions. If you do want to get more information on that, you can look up uh, this person's channel. Um, he's got a very good explanation of how silicon, semiconductors, etc. allow for a transistor to be made. Okay. So, you've got an emitter, you've got a collector, you've got a base, and effectively it's like a switch here, Okay, the way we're going to understand it. You can also uh, explain in terms of uh, being an amplifier, but we're going to look at it as a switch. Effectively, if you supply a current to or a voltage to this base, you allow a current to flow through here from the emitter to the collector. Okay, so that's the start bit how it works. Now, so that's a transistor effectively. Okay, now how do we get a NAND gate? Well, we can use two transistors together like this and a flow like this. So that's effectively my input. That's my output. Now. I should say, first of all, what is a NAND gate? Well, it's not AND. So if you imagine what an AND is, it's, uh, well, it, both are on. If you've done any sort of programming at all, you'll know that if both both conditions are met, then the uh, effectively the AND condition is also met. So if condition 1 and condition 2 are both met, then, you know, condition 3 is met, I suppose. Uh, well, a NAND gate is not that. So if both conditions are met, then it's off. Okay? However, if any condition is not met, i.e. either A is off or B is off, then uh, the output's on, or if they're both off, the output's still on. Okay. Now, how does a computer understand on and off, or effectively on being one and you know uh, off being zero? How do you understand zero and a one? Because they're the same thing. Well, as far as we're concerned, well, it uh, understands it as a high or low voltage. So currently, if you look at this diagram, uh, VC flows to F, and it can be a high voltage because no current goes this way because if I turn this off, or I should say, you know, how I've set the transistors up, it's probably easiest, easiest to understand it. If you turn A off, or you turn B off, okay, um, then it's not going to flow through. So if you imagine them both being off, then effectively, no current goes through here, okay, the current does go through here, so they're going to be on. Now, it doesn't really matter if I turn both A and B off, or if I just turn one of A and B off, because it's still going to be broken. So the current will go from here to here. So you can see that off, off is going to give me on. But also one of them being off, or one of them being either one A or B, is also going to give me an on, right? Now when I turn them both on, I, the current can flow from here to here. And effectively, this now becomes off, right? Because the current flows from here to here, is now allowed to flow from here to here, and you get a low, low voltage coming through here, okay? So the current's way reduced. I'm sure it's probably, you know, there is another layer, can I say, there must be another layer that's a little more complicated in terms of how you explain this, but, you know, in terms of getting the functionality, that is how it functions. Now, a NAND gate does have a nice property called functional completeness, so any other logic gate can be constructed from it, okay? So if you want to construct an OR, a NOT OR, etc., a NOT OR, an XOR, I mean, and lots of other logic gates, you can build them all up from a NAND gate. Now when you see them written down, they're going to be like this. We've got A, we've got B, we've got an out, okay? That by itself is an AND gate, that with a little dot at the end makes it a NAND gate, okay? Right, so that's a, a NAND gate. Now, this is the sort of crucial bit, this is the really interesting bit. So we can use those NAND gates to effectively make a computer remember a value, remember a bit, remember a zero or a one. Okay, and what we're going to look at is when we turn set on, okay, uh, the circuit will sort of remember this input, if you like. And when I turn set off, it won't matter what I turn this to, the input that you had before will be remembered. And it's this sort of looping back logic, I suppose, that's at the heart of this. 
Okay, so let's go through some combinations and we can see how this is going to work. So let's say, and it's a good, good way to go through it, if I set set on and I put input off, what output will I get? Okay, well, if I put set on, turn my input off. Now remember, and you, know, you can always use this as a reference here, because I've put it up there as a bit of reference. If the input's off, I'm going to get an output that's on. If both inputs are on, as clearly they are to two, I'm going to get an output that's off. Okay, one off means the uh, it could be one or both off, it doesn't matter, you're still getting the same output as a one here. That comes through from there to there. Okay, one, one. Um, now, sorry, I need to be a bit lower. So, I mean, better to put that there, I think. Okay, so we get a one and a one into this one, which means my output from three is going to effectively be off. So we get an output that's off. Okay, and I'll put this here for this wire. The output on this wire, which will follow down from there to there, I'm putting the wrong one there, is now also off. All right, good. So that's how we start. So let's say now I'm going to keep my I'm going to turn set off and see what happens. If I turn set off, I'm going to leave my input off for the time being. I'm going to see what happens to my output. Now I'm going to leave these two, these slightly ambiguous ones, because well, this one relies on the outputs of this gate and this output here relies on the output of that gate, so they're kind of dependent upon each other. All right, so I'm going to leave them as they are. All right, those two. I need to do that throughout. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the input here set to being off again. All right. Well, if they're both off, that's going to be a one. Now, you know, it's tricky. We can't say straight away what it is because that's off. That output's now going to be also a one. Right. Well. So how do we determine what's going to happen at 3 and 4? Well, the first thing that will happen at both 3 and 4, and they are consistent, is it'll do what it saw before. All right? So this sees a 1 and an off first, so it's going to output a 1. This sees a 1 and a 1 first, and it'll output an off. So irrespective of which one it does first, it doesn't matter if it does this one first or that one first. Okay? You don't know how electricity travels, but um, it's going to turn, if there's a 1 and a 1, it's going to turn that one off. Okay? It's going to turn that one on. So effectively now, you're going to get an on and on, that's going to be an off. Good. Alright. Now, let's um, move on. Alright. So now let's change set to be 1. Alright. Now, those two, as we've said, are always going to stay the same. Uh, let's just rub the rest of this off. And we're now turning, oops, I don't want to turn set to be 1. What I want to do, leave set off and turn my inputs to be 1, I should say. All right. Now, as we've got an off coming in, we're going to, that's going to turn that on. Right. As that's on and on, that, okay, let's, let's go through this. So let's do this one. We've done the output from that one's going to clearly be on. As we've got an off coming from this one, that's going to clearly be on. And it's really the same as before, okay. Whichever gate gets set first, if I have two ons here, I'm getting an off here, and that matches that. If this gate gets set first, I've got an on and off, that matches that one, right? So what's going to come out here? Well, as they're both on, that's going to be an off, right? So now we can see, uh, now I've turned set off, it doesn't matter what happens to my input, it can be um, on, or, on or off, my output's going to be off. So you've kind of got this relationship that that has been stored, okay? And it's outputting here and here. So I should see a similar pattern then if I turn set back on to 1 and set my input to 1, I should see that it stores that, alright? So let's see what happens there, okay? So now I need to rub out the whole lot for this. Okay. Well, we've got an on and on, so that's going to be an off. We've got an off, so that's going to be uh, an on. Right, we got an off here. So as soon as you see an off, well that changes things. That's going to now be an on coming out here. So again, on coming out here, and we get an off coming out here. Okay, I've done that fairly quickly. Let's just slow down a little bit. So turn the input on, set on. I get an off. I get an off coming into here. I get a one coming out here. I get an off coming into here. I get a one coming out here. Okay, uh, that one. 
So that goes back into there. Now I get two ones coming in here. I get an off coming out here. And again, I've put the the things here to so you can help learn them. All right. Remember here, this is output's going to both here and here, isn't it? Okay. You could put a zero there and there if you wanted. All right. And it's well worth just you know jotting the diagram down and, and repeating this exercise a few times. It, uh, it clarifies things. So clearly, as I've just seen. I now, when I turn set back on and I turn my input to 1, I get an output of 1. So now I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to turn set off. I'll leave it on to begin with and see what happens. Does anything change? And I'm expecting to see really what I had before, alright? But this time obviously it was things switched around. So um, set's now going to be off. I want to keep these two in the middle and I want to delete everything else. Alright. Let's just make that a bit of a clearer zero. So I get one off, that comes on, that comes on, that's going to be like that. Right, one, one going into there. Okay, well, we don't know what these are going to be because they've both got one coming in, but as I've said before, the first thing they will see is what state it was before. So that's now an off coming out, and off coming out means we're going to get a one coming out here. Brilliant. So it's now back to being uh, so turned it off, turned set off, and I still get a one coming out. So I'm now going to turn keep set off, but I'm going to change my inputs to be zero. And again, I need to keep those ones in the middle. Alright. And see what happens. Both off means your output's going to be on. Oops. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Yeah, so both off. It's just, sorry, doing two things at once. Both off, off here, off here. And you get an output that's on. Off coming into here, and a one coming into here means you're going to get an output that's on. All right. Uh, well, we don't know what's going to go happen into here and here, but as I've said before, it will first of all pick up on what happened before. So what's coming out of here, one and one, gives me a zero coming out of here as it was before. And it doesn't matter which you see first. You know, we've got a zero or one. If it does this gate first, and I get a one and a one, I get a zero coming out. And it's still consistent because if it does this gate first, I get a zero zero, and I get a one going out here. So, well, if I get a zero and a one here, so you see. What I'm trying to get across there is if it does this one first or that one first, these two will still stay exactly the same. You can work it around other way. Okay, so it's you know it must stay as it is really. So here we've got zero and a one. What's going to come out? A one, right? So that's going to be a one there. So what you see is you've got this input being set here and this output being set here. All right. So I set my I set my bit and it remains to, keeps the value. It doesn't matter. Since I turn set off, it will remember what happened before, right? If I turn set to one, I put the uh, I goes in, if you like. I then turn set off, and whatever I do to my input, okay, I is the old O is still coming out. If I change it now, if I turn set on again, so I set my memory, if you like, set my bit. If I set it to one this time, okay, um, then when I turn set off, it's going to output one, irrespective of how I change my input. All right? So I set it by turning set on and then that set value is going to come out all the time when I set set off. So I set it and then I turn set off and it remembers what it was before. Okay, You can see here and here that's happening. So I set it to zero and then turn set off, it always outputs zero. I set it to one, I turn set off, it always outputs one. Okay, So that's effectively um, how the bit works. And as I say, it's a really good exercise. I've done it a few times just to sort of copy the diagram down and to go through the steps. Um, it makes things a lot clearer if you do it yourself a few times. Clear. Okay. So let's just turn that back off. Now we're going to move on to the next step. And it's sort of you know, after this, you know, you've, you've got the main part really. Uh, but we'll go through the rest of it as well. So to go from a bit to a byte, well, all I really need is eight bytes. All right. And as you can imagine here, yeah, this could be on a bus, all right. So now, when I turn set on, I'm setting it for all of them. Okay, so the same, this set here has been, you know, is this set here. So this one set is now triggering all eight memory bytes. All right. If I turn set on, all right, then it's going to all of these memory bits are going to be set to whatever the different eyes are now. I can clearly be different, right? These two can be different inputs. I can set this to zero, this to one, this to one, zero, zero, one, zero, one. All right, and it will store those. And when I turn set off, these outputs will just keep what they had before. Okay, so 
all a bit really is is sorry all a byte really is is eight bits put together okay with a set so you can set them okay in the sense that we mean it anyway okay similar with the enabler. Well how does an enabler work? Um, this is an AND gate so it's on when both are on. Okay, And this is just a bit of an extra bit you need to put on to, to your to your byte, Okay, which we'll come to on the next slide. Alright, actually I'm going to say one more thing um, about the, 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 the thing we had before, before we move on. This is our byte and you can imagine what this could be is a bus so effectively you could have a number of bytes connected to a bus Okay, and if you want to set one byte, you could turn this one on, okay, and all the others off. Then the bus will go into this byte, but not the others. Then you can turn this one off, and you can send a different, uh, a different set of zeros and ones to another, to another byte. Okay, and then it can output here as well. Okay, so the output here. The problem is at the minute you've got um, where the enabler comes in. I'm just going to explain at the minute. It's always going to output the memory addresses irrespective okay so there's no way of controlling if you've got a number of bytes together on one bus there's no way of controlling things and that's a little bit of where the enabler comes in all right so what does the enabler do well basically if I turn this to zero okay I'm gonna, I'm gonna say what it does first and then I'll explain how that works if I set this enabler to zero as this is an AND gate when as you know with an AND if one's off then the you know Boolean table for a, for a NAND gate means that the whole lot's going to be off. Okay, so one's off means that the two together going to be off. Okay, they have to be both on to be on. Exactly the opposite of the NAND, right? So let's say I turn this to this E here to off, then all of the outputs will be off. Next, let's say I turn this to be on. Well, if this was a zero, and I get a zero and a one, I get a zero here. All right, so the input will be the output. If this is a 1, I get a 1 and a 1 here, and I get a 1 here. So the input will still be the output. So what the enabler does, it says if you're on, okay, if you turn this on, then basically the zeros and ones that are stored are going to come out of here on the bus. All right. Now if you had a number of different ones, you can see how that would work. Okay, You just turn one on, you know, a number of different enablers connected to the same bus. You can imagine a bus coming down here, and it's got an enabler you know, here, an enabler there. And you know, uh, we'll see it two together in a minute. And then you can basically, it's probably best explained when I see you see the bytes and the enabler together on the next slide. But basically, it allows you to turn the byte on and off and put it onto the bus. So when you put the enabler and the byte together, like this, as I've just explained, really, that is effectively what makes the register. Okay, the set allows you to set the input or the from the bus into the byte. Okay, and then when you turn that off, it's not going to go in again, it's going to keep it as it is. Then when you want that information back onto the same bus, a different bus, okay, you turn the enabler back on and that information can then come out. Alright, so, so those two things together make up what we call a register. Okay. Right, well, thank you for listening. I don't think there's anything else. No oh yeah, I should say before I do leave where I got this information from and I found this to be a very good book, uh, but how do it know? It does explain um, let's explain how it works, how a computer works very well. It doesn't start with the transistor, it starts with the NAND gate, so I've added that bit in myself. But um, that said, okay, uh, it does give a very good explanation of how all these things tie together. Okay, thank you for listening. Uh, you can find this on Amazon, that's where I got it. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.